let's think about Azure Private Link and how we can use that for business to business communication using private network in, in Azure. And let's also highlight one of the gotchas when working with private link and talking to other customers also hosted on Azure. So in this diagram here, we've got a scenario which will be fairly familiar to most people looking and working with private link. Over here, I've got my virtual machine 10214. It's in a virtual network with custom DNS specified. It points to a DNS server inside of my hub VNet 10.10.3.4. It's a Windows Active Directory with integrated DNS. This forwards to Azure DNS on the 168 address. And I've got an Azure DNS private zone or private link.blob.core.windows.net, which is mapping a FQDN here to a, a record with 10.3.1.6 as the private IP that gets returned, which ultimately returns me this private endpoint address over here, which points to my storage account with this FQDN, config 159, etc. And this is fairly complicated when you first look at it, but we've done a lot of learning and training in the past to understand why these components are required and the integration that is needed to make this all possible. And the end result is that when I go to my virtual machine here, the client, and I try and access this storage account, remember all of this here is in, under my control in my company, in my tenant, the end result is I get back the 10.3.1.6 address as the IP address I try and connect to, despite using the normal storage account FQDN. That's the whole story of you keep using the same FQDN, you don't have to modify your API calls, etc would you access it using an IP address within your VNet as opposed to a public IP address? Now, let's say I also work with this partner here, the Purple partner with their own instance on Azure. And for whatever reason, I need to access their storage account. This could be another tenant in your organization or any number of scenarios where you're accessing a storage account for integration purposes where fundamentally this storage account is outside of your control. And let's say you've adopted the pattern where you've worked with this partner to identify your public IP address. For example, you, maybe you come into the hub VNet here, you go through a centralized firewall, that's got a known public IP. And on this storage account firewall, they've allow listed your public IP. But fundamentally from this virtual machine here, when you access this partner, you're using the public interface on the storage account. Let's say you've done all of that and it's all working okay. What you would expect to see on the client in terms of DNS resolution is as follows. When looking up your storage account, this config 159 address, you get back the 10316, which is your private endpoint in the VNet. When you look up your partner's storage account, you get back the 52.239 address. And all of these storage account access flows are working. Now let's consider what happens when the partner does something fairly innocent and innocuous. And let's see how that could impact your access to the storage account. Now imagine that I'm the partner here and I'm accessing the CSV storage account. And you can see at the moment, I don't have any private endpoint connections set up. And I'm using the public IP allow list in for my partner to access it. Let's say for whatever reason, I now want to set up private link within my own purple box for private access. And let's say I go ahead and do that. Okay, I've finished setting up that private endpoint now. So let's update our whiteboard. So the purple team instantiated this private endpoint for their own use and mapped it to their storage account. Remember before, I was accessing the purple storage account over the public interface, over the Microsoft backbone, it's in the public side of this storage account. If we look at the full DNS chain before the purple partner enable private link, you can see it's relatively straightforward. We have the storage account name being mapped to some sort of stamp here with the suffix of Amsterdam. This is a storage account in West Europe. This is some of the internal nomenclature we use for the particular service. 
It's very sort of straightforward there. Now that I've enabled private endpoints within the purple box, let me redig that. We can see that, as we've talked about before, when you enable private endpoints on a service, there is some changes that happens inside of public DNS. Inside of public DNS, this additional CNAME redirection gets inserted that maps the initial FQDN to the same FQDN, but with the private link suffix inserted. And ultimately, if you're accessing this on a, a public interface, nothing changes for you. You still get back, ultimately, the public IP. But we do this so we can make use of Azure DNS private zones with the special suffix of private link. However, the gotcha I want to highlight is the Purple team, even though they've carried out a piece of work inside of their own organization to meet their own security requirements, they have inadvertently broken my access to their storage account. If I go back to my client VM and now do a flush DNS, and again do an NS lookup for my partner's storage account FQDN, we see we have a problem here. Whereas before I was getting back the public IP address and being able to successfully connect, now we are not getting back anything. We are effectively getting an NX domain response. This means that I cannot access my partner's storage account now. So by them making a change which had nothing to do with my access, they've broken my access. And you can imagine this would be a fairly tricky thing to troubleshoot if you were not aware of this interaction that happens with Azure Public DNS. Now there's a few recommended fixes for this, and I'll leave a link to Daniel Mauser's article on this, which summarizes the problem and solutions in great detail. Here is the article that talks about this B2B scenario. And the solutions that we have are to be more specific with our forwarder or set up a private endpoint to that third party. So that second solution there would involve me building my own private endpoint here inside of my subscription, mapping it to their storage account resource. So they would have to give me the storage account resource ID or alias, and they would have to approve my private endpoint connection. Remember, private links works cross-tenant, allows overlapping IP addresses, et cetera, et cetera. And in effect, by doing that, if they enabled that private endpoint for access, I would remove this green line here. I would have to insert another A record in my private link, .blob.core, Azure DNS private zone, and I would, from a network point of view, be accessing their storage account just like I access my storage account. Okay, and just to round out and finish this explanation, I'll demonstrate the, the first workaround that Daniel poses in his article. So here we can see on my client, my lookup to my partner's account is currently failing because we know they've got private link enabled and I don't have their A record in my private link zone. I've reversed my topology now, I removed that private endpoint I set up. We jump on my DNS server, my custom DNS server in the VNet here and have a look at the forwarding config. We can see why it's behaving like this. I've got no conditional forwarder set up anymore. Because this server is inside of Azure, I'm simply setting up the unknown global forwarder to point to Azure DNS, which is why it's making use of Azure DNS private zones if I've got them linked to that VNet. So let's jump back to the whiteboard now. And on here, I'm going to show you what I'm going to update in terms of my forwarding config. So as we said, we're forwarding everything to Azure DNS, which includes things going to this private link DNS zone here. So uh, even though my diagram says I've got a conditional forwarder there, effectively that's been handled by the global forwarder, the same sort of intent. But I'm going to add another forwarder here, which is more specific. So it's got my full FQDN of my partner storage account, CSB name here, .blob.core.windows.net, and I'm going to point it to a DNS server that lives outside of the VNet here that's linked to Azure DNS private zones, so when this resolves the private link IP, it will ultimately get back a public IP address for my client VM to use, which should result in it going out over the public internet and using the original security policy, 
that my partner had set up with allow lifting on the public side of the storage account. So let's go ahead and add that conditional folder now. I'm going to point it to this 1.1.1.1 address, which is a publicly available DNS service provided by Cloudflare. And of course, that is on the public internet. It's definitely not linked to my Azure DNS private zone. Clear my cache there. Clear my cache on the client. You can see that I'm still able to resolve my own storage account to my private endpoint IP. But if I do a lookup now for my partner's storage account, whereas before I was getting no response because there was no A record in my private DNS zone, I'm now getting back that public IP. So this is going to work. That's one way of getting it to work. So just to sort of solidify what's happening there. When the request comes in for that very specific FQDN, the traffic's getting pushed out to that external DNS server that's not linked to Azure DNS private zones. So that's working to give public access over to the purple box and kind of fixing that quirk that we talked about in the opener. But if it doesn't match that conditional forwarder here, it gets routed out to Azure DNS and then my private DNS zone conflict kicks in for my own storage account. This config 159 was the example that we used before. But what if we didn't feel comfortable relying on a third party service here for resolution to effectively a traffic flow that's happening entirely inside of Azure here? Is there anything else we could do to implement this first category of workaround? Well, the answer is yes, we can leverage a, another relatively new feature, one that just went GA at Ignite, the Azure DNS Private Resolver, which can be put in an isolated VNet here, which has got IP connectivity back to our custom DNS server, but fundamentally is not connected via a virtual network link to our Azure DNS Private Zone. So the hypothesis here that we're going to test is traffic will come in from our client, go to our custom DNS server. We're going to modify that specific conditional forwarder for our partner's FQDN. Whereas before we were pointing to Cloudflare, we're going to point to the inbound endpoint of our private DNS resolver, which will then forward the request to Azure DNS. But because it's not in a link VNet, we're not going to return the private endpoint IP, we should again get back the public IP. This is what the resolver looks like when you deploy it in the portal here. So relatively straightforward. I don't need to have an outbound endpoint for the scenario that I'm configuring here. I just want to use it to get traffic to Azure DNS from a different VNet. I've got an inbound endpoint configured with an IP address here. I'm going to go back to my custom DNS server modify my IP address here, 10.2.3.4, clear my cache, and then check my DNS resolution again. Firstly for my account, still working, and then for the partner account, again, still working. So if we wrap up here and zoom out a little bit, what we've shown here is that you have to be a little bit careful when using private link internally in your company and working with other companies on Azure where they also might be using private link, where previously you might have used public networking to get to their storage account. What we've shown is that you might inadvertently break that connectivity. Now, if we step um, back and say, well, what is the right solution? It would be workaround two that's in Daniel's article, which is, hey, just use the feature as it was built. And that would be build your own private endpoint and establish that B2B connection in a private way and use a private endpoint in your subscription to get to their storage account. That would be the recommended approach. But if you have a reason why that's not going to work for you, what we've shown is you can get around that. You can sort of circumnavigate the behavior by introducing those longer FQDNs, which is workaround number one. Well, that's going to be pretty uh, unscalable and harder to automate than option number two. So depending on how much of this B2B traffic that you do, it's um, one to be aware of. There's probably other workarounds that are available out there. And I'd be really interested to know if you're working with your own DNS provider, 
perhaps a different third party appliance like Infoblox or or DNS or something like that, and you fix this challenge in a different way, perhaps using a, a proprietary feature that we're not aware of. But anyway, if you have hit this problem or if you're just interested in private link in general, hope you found this video interesting and I will catch you in the next one.